Hello, I'm Matt James Guy, and this is my 4x8 Harbor Freight trailer that I bought many, many, many years ago for like $299 on sale back when uh, the Canadian dollar was closer to the American dollar. It was well worth it to go across the line and shop for stuff like this. Not anymore. Uh, this, these things are going for about 520 bucks at Harbor Freight right now with exchange rate that gets us up to about 712 Canadian dollars. Add 200 bucks worth of, you know, import inspection stuff to get it across the line and import it. I think you can buy this exact same trailer, a Canadian tire now, for like 1100 bucks. Just That's just worth it. Just go ahead and do that. But anyways, here we are. We are loaded for bear, as you can see. This is the first weekend. We get possession of our condo in a Soyuz. So we are taking the first load up. This is all going into storage up there. Uh, for the future, we've got this thing all ready to go with extreme amounts of sketchy straps holding a bunch of sketchy bins down. <laughs> you got to understand that this is a mountain road. There's three mountain passes to get there. Highway 3 is called the Crow's Nest Highway. It's a little bit notorious. Weather looks okay so far, so I'm not extremely worried. The old CX-5, we're going to pull it up with that, see how, see how it does. And uh, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. The thing's got tons of power. It's going to be fine. Tire pressures are checked. Everything's checked, ready to go. Um, check the wheel bearings, spare tire. Uh, pack my emergency kind of trailering kit with an extra wheel bearing and a few things. Yeah, let's just, uh, let's just continue tomorrow. Okay, it is the next day. Um, I decided, I looked at the weather and saw bad things. Plus, it was just too sketchy. So I've made a trailer burrito. Um, let's hashtag that. Hashtag trailer burrito. And uh, yeah, big tarp wrapped everything up and we are set to go here. Before you set off, you know, we check stuff like, hey, is the clearance lights working and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I think we can call this a long-term review because I have owned this trailer for a long, 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 long time. So let's call it a long-term review. Plus we got big hills to go up. So this is also gonna double as a CX-5. How well does it pull that review? Maybe if we could hit a scale at some point, I don't know if we will, but anyway, we're gonna set off right away. And one more thing to add, a little bit of a top tip here, is if you're using a tarp, always like hold down the open end. So like right here, we got bungees holding that down. Like the open end is the thing that's gonna be flapping in the breeze. And that's like, you see those sketchy people going down the freeway with tarps flying everywhere. All down the side here where, you know, the open end at the top of the tarp, uh, there's just bungees holding everything down. So hopefully we don't get that and we don't look like sketchy people. Okay, we're underway. Um, we're on the freeway now. Maximum speed for this trailer is 55 miles per hour. I'm going about 95 kilometers per hour, which is just under 60 miles an hour. So I don't want to go too slow, but anyway, everybody seems to be driving so slow today, it's ridiculous. But anyway, I'll have a couple specs. This car, uh, CX-5 GT Turbo, even the non-turbo, is good for 2,000 pounds towing capacity. I'm thinking I have about 1,000 pounds, maybe 1,200 pounds back there. So, yeah, we'll be fine. Quick fuel stop here. Um, basically, putting 91 octane into the old CX-5 that gives you an extra 22 horsepower over regular gas. Um, yeah, 250 horsepower instead of 228. And how it does this is, as soon as it notices a fuel level change, the engine goes into like super duper learning mode, and it learns real fast what octane's going or what octane you just uh, filled it up with. But anyways. I check the hubs on the trailer like I always do at all my stops just to make sure that nothing's out of whack. Everything seems good. I think I'm going to tie down uh, this tarp a little better. She's flapping a little bit. The burrito is flapping. So that's what I'm going to do now. And we'll keep going. Hey, we're 
are just past Hope. We are on Highway 3, actually on Highway 3, and here's the notorious hill coming up here. This is the Hope Slide Hill. It's about 7% grade for about 5, 6, 7 kilometers. I'm not sure, so I'm just going to leave it in drive here. Not going to touch anything. Usually it's a one downshift down to fifth when I don't have a trailer and I'm packed with my family and all my gear. So there's one downshift. Oh, she's still falling, so now we hit fourth gear, and it's pulled right up to set speed, so we are down an extra gear over normal, as you can see here, um, but otherwise, nothing to report. It's just going smoothly and nice and relaxing at just under 60 miles an hour, 95 kilometers per hour. Even there's somebody behind me who's just been following me this whole time. And it's just, he just likes my speed as well. It's just, we're like in a convoy or whatever you want to call it. Well, we are in Manning Park. The roads have been kind of sketchy, but it's all good. Um, everything's good. Trailer's good. CX-5 is good. Hubs are stone cold on the trailer. Charp is still on. Sorry, trailer burrito is still on. And, uh, and we will continue on. Just a quick bathroom break. Typical here, we stop at Manning when we're on our way to Asoyas. And uh, what a beautiful place. Skiing's just up the hill. Yeah, so uh, we will continue on. Just rolling into town. CX-5's been amazing. Trailer's been amazing. Nothing to report. Look at the view. You can kind of see the lake just over the hills over there. There it is, Soyuz Lake. Looks like it's frozen. Hmm. here I would say this is better than a pickup uh, anyway we're here uh, hey top tip when you're done using your trailer why don't you check the license stuff before you put it away that way uh, if they are broken you don't like you don't have to fix it as you want to use it you can fix it kind of in between there's there's a top tip next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to we're gonna unload this I'm gonna fold it up Put it away, which is another reason why this trailer is so amazing because it folds up and goes in such a nice tight spot. And then I'm going to show you a couple issues I've had with the trailer and how I fix them. Okay, there we go. Uh, it's all folded up. Isn't that amazing? I can roll that thing anywhere in the garage now. So good, so good. Um, that thing got dirty. Holy cow, did it ever get dirty. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm gonna show you a couple things that I've had to fix on this thing over the years that I've owned it. One of them here, the fenders. That little, uh, little bracket in there that holds the fenders, just with the fenders vibrating. That bracket, both of them have cracked, so I kind of, you can't really see it, but I welded gussets in there and, and like kind of made them stronger so that doesn't happen anymore. The other thing is where that bolts to the frame, these fenders, you can see down in there where they kind of like bolt to the frame right there. You can see the bolt to the, to the red frame there. That used to be just a short bolt, but what happened was above that, the channel, the piece of like channel would start cracking because as the fender kind of vibrated, in here, it actually cracked the frame because all it was being held by was that little tiny piece of metal like right there, the red thin piece of metal. But all I did was I made a spacer for it. You can see here that now they're long bolts that go right from, right from here all the way through the frame to the channel and all the way through. So it's got a lot more support now and it's been rock solid ever since. Another thing is when I actually put, assembled this thing, when I put it all together, I did not use the wiring harness that it came with where I, I kind of did. 
but it was actually grounded through the frame and everyone on the internet said, don't do that because it's like grounded through painted stuff. So obviously the lights wouldn't work very well. So I basically redid the entire harness. You can see everything is like split loom everywhere, all nice with dedicated grounds all the way, you know, it goes through the pivot down here, up the other side, you know, nice loomage, you know, made it nice, nice and reliable. So I didn't have to ever worry about wiring stuff ever again. And you know, that's kind of it. I had to buy, it didn't come with the deck. I used just half inch plywood. I think I used, it was a treated piece of plywood, uh, but I, I should have used three quarters. It's pretty badly damaged from hauling pianos and all sorts of kind of, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, that's it. This trailer is amazing. I think it is a better option than owning a pickup truck because you can drive a vehicle around that's highly fuel efficient and it did quite well at 10.2 liters per 100 kilometers. And this is an 800 foot elevation gain. So, you know, round trip, it'll even be way better than that. And if you only need a pickup truck like two, three, four, five times a year, 60 bucks worth of insurance on this trailer, pull it on any time, hook it up. To me, it's a no-brainer. But anyway, hey, if you found this useful, even just mildly entertaining, please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time.